The night is past, the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And we turn and read God's word from Psalm 119, verse 153, and we'll read to the end of that chapter. O oh, consider my affliction, and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me, according to your promise give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord, give me life according to your judgments. Many there are that persecute and oppress me, yet I do not swerve from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the treacherous, for they do not keep your word. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous judgments endure forever. Princes have persecuted me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad of your word as one who finds great spoils. As for lies, I hate and abhor them, but your Lord do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law. Nothing shall make them stumble. Lord, I have looked for your salvation, and I have fulfilled your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies, and I greatly have loved them. I have kept your commandments and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you have taught me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise you. Let your judgments be my help. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. O oh, seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. And so we thank God for his word. His uh, commandments, his statutes, his instructions show us how to live. And so therefore we, like the psalmist, praise him all the day long. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Your word is true and living. We pray, Lord, that your word will be in our hearts and will produce fruit in our lives. Ezekiel chapter 12, verses 1 to 16. The word of the Lord came to me. Mortal, you are living in the midst of a rebellious house, who have eyes but do not see, who have ears but do not hear, for they are a rebellious house. Therefore, mortal, prepare yourself an exile's baggage, and go into exile by day in their sight. You shall go like an exile from your place to another place in their sight. Perhaps they will understand, though they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your baggage by day in their sight, as baggage for exile. You shall go out yourself at evening in their sight, as those who do go into exile. Dig through the wall in their sight, and carry the baggage through it. In their sight you shall lift the baggage on your shoulder and carry it out in the dark. You shall cover your face so that you may not see the land, for I have made you a sign for the house of Israel. I did just as I was commanded. I brought out my baggage by day as baggage for an exile, and in the evening I dug through the wall with my own hands. I brought it out in the dark, carrying it on my shoulder in their sight. In the morning the word of the Lord came to me, Mortal, has not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said to me, What are you doing? Say to them, Thus says the Lord God, This oracle concerns the prince of Jerusalem and all the house of Israel in it. Say, I am a sign for you. As I have done, so it shall be done to them. They shall go into exile, into captivity. And the prince who is among them shall lift his baggage on his shoulder in the dark and shall go out. He shall dig through the wall and carry it through. He shall cover his face 
so that he may not see the land with his eyes. I have spread my net over him, and he shall be caught in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon, to the land of the Chaldeans, yet he shall not see it, and he shall die there. I will scatter to every wind all who are around him, his helpers and all his troops, and I will unsheathe the sword behind them, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I disperse them among the nations, and scatter them through the countries. I will let a few of them escape from the sword, from famine and pestilence, so they may tell of their abominations among the nations where they go. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God. The Lord came to Ezekiel as a warning of coming judgment. And he acted out this scene of taking out his baggage because the people of Israel were going to be taken out and uh, sent into exile too. And God still warns of coming judgment. Turn to him while he may be found. And let's make sure that we are calling people to him, calling people to flee the judgment of God and turn to him. 2 Corinthians and chapter 8 verses 1 to 15. We want you to know, brothers and sisters, about the grace of God that has been granted to the churches of Macedonia. For during a severe ordeal of affliction, their abundant joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For as I can testify, they voluntarily gave according to their means, and even beyond their means, begging us earnestly for the privilege of sharing in this ministry to the saints, and this not merely as expected. They gave themselves first to the Lord by the will of God, to us, so that we might urge Titus that he, as he has already made a beginning, so he should complete his generous undertaking among you. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this is a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if on, on, the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you. It is a question of fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. So here was the vision that Paul was laying before the church, that they should share that which the Lord had given them. In good times, they were to bless others, so that no one had too much and no one had too little. This has always been God's plan. Paul here is quoting um, from the Exodus, when uh, the people of Israel ate manna in the wilderness, and they, however much they gathered, they had just the right amount. God made sure that the, the, that which they gathered uh, filled uh, each one so everyone had just enough and we pray that we too may uh, so work in the church that we are able to share all that we have so that there may be an equality amongst us giving to the poor so that the poor might be rich so that when they're rich and we're poor they can give to us this is the dream of the gospel um, a fair world for all of God's people. Lord, we seem so far from that. We lift it up to you and pray, Lord, that you will um, so stir our hearts and lives that we, through generosity, may share with your people the good things you've given us, that your people may have an equality, that there may be a fair sharing of the world's resources. Lord, we pray that you will bless your church today. 
Help us in all that we do, that we may be examples in this world to those who don't yet know you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us, including the person who stole my bike. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.